It's bound to happen. One day you're going to find a bottle that you've been really wanting and it's going to be disappointing for one reason or another. These are 10 of my bourbons that were really disappointing. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Brad's Bourbon Reviews. I'm Brad and today we're talking about some disappointing bourbons. It's going to happen. You're going to spend money on a bottle. You're not going to like it for one reason or another. And sometimes those bottles end up on lists on YouTube. And that's what this video is today. So a few things before we get into it. First off, this is just my opinion. If there's a bottle on this list that you love, I'm happy for you. I'm truly, truly, truly happy for you. This is just my opinion. Secondly, disappointing does not always mean bad. It doesn't, all right? It just means for one reason or another, maybe it was hype, whatever the case may be, that you get a bottle, you crack it open, and it's just not what you wanted from the bottle. So keep those two things in mind. These are in no particular order. Let's get into the first one. First one up here is the Bardstown Origin Series Rye. Here's the thing about this bottle. It is not bad at all. It is just twice the price of the regular Bardstown series. I think those are like 45, this was like 80. So maybe not, not exactly twice the price, but close to twice the price. And it's just a solid rye. There's plenty of ryes that are just as good as this one that aren't as expensive. I actually think Sazerac rye is a little bit better. This is finished though. It's, it's Kentucky straight rye whiskey finished in toasted cherry wood and oak barrels. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, but when you compare this to the other bottles of the Origin series, this one just falls flat on its face and it's just not very good, especially not for what you pay for it. So Bardstown Origin series rye, you're on the list. Moving on to the next one. Oh boy, this one's gonna upset some people. Uh, we have the Ben Holiday Rickhouse Proof. This bottle was a gift to me from a friend who was like really high on the Ben Holiday stuff. Had heard all the hype, had heard Bruzel talking about it. And I got this bottle and I was super excited to get it. Still thank you very much, Brandon, for the gift. But I just don't get the hype. I don't get it. It's not bad necessarily, but I was very disappointed. And this is just like, it's just kind of okay whiskey. I don't, I don't get the the hype and the love for Ben Holiday. Again, there's nothing wrong with this bottle. It, to me, it's just okay. And it was disappointing because I really wanted to like it because the, we are finally getting Ben Holiday stuff in Florida. And at the time, I was really excited to try it. Here's the thing, I'll try another expression. I've tried a few of these from Ben Holiday and I've kind of felt the same out of all of them. I don't know, to me, I just think, I just think it's, it's just a little disappointing because I was expecting a little bit more out of this. And it is, uh, these bottles are not like super inexpensive. I think this is like $60, 65, 70, somewhere around there for a brick house proof. It's 120 proof and it just drinks a little harsh and I don't know just to me it's just disappointing I just I don't I don't I don't love it so Ben Holiday Rickhouse Proof you're on the list moving on to the next one oh. <laughs> this is the old Blanton's Green Label um, I do not like this bottle at all this is Blanton's it's, it's a Canadian exclusive and that's where it should stay they know they know what they did. This is not a very good bottle of bourbon. This was super disappointing to me because I like Blanton's. I don't think it's the end-all be-all to bourbon, but I really do like the gold and the straight from the barrel. And I actually like regular, you know, 93 and whatever proof Blanton's it is. But this one just is just bad. It is bad. It tastes like wood chip water. It's just not good. They should never have bottled this at night at uh, 80 proof. It smells really nice. That's one thing that's really, really annoying about it is that it's... Uh, this nose is really pleasant, but the bottle itself is just terrible. I, I, I like, I'm glad I have it just because it completes the collection for me. Well, not, not completes, but it's part of the puzzle to complete the collection at some point. But this one, it was just so disappointing to me because I really wanted to like it because I wanted to have another barrel of, uh, I wanted to have another bottle of Blanton's that I was into. And this one just is so not it. I can't explain it to you. This one is actually one that's really bad and disappointing. So it's like a double on the list, but it's, it's not good. Uh, Blanton's Green Label, you made the most disappointing bourbons in my collection. Moving on to the next one. Number four, here's another bottle from Buffalo Trace, and that is Traveler Whiskey. I was actually excited about this. Chris Ableton, I don't know a ton about his whiskey, um, or his whiskey. I don't know a ton about his music, but I know he likes Buffalo Trace, I think. I don't know. I got excited. I got into the hype. And while I do tend to like this more than other people. A, I use it as a mixer primarily, and B, I I just, I, I, I do like it more than, some people just think it's like the worst thing ever made. I don't think it's that level, 
But I was disappointed in this because I was expecting something a little more special from Buffalo Trace than what this is. There's zero transparency about what's in the bottle. But uh, yeah, I was really disappointed in this. I wanted to like it more than I did. Some people will just completely go like, I will never drink that. That's not the case for me. I use it as a mixer. It's like expecting something really great and then getting Jack Daniels old number seven, where it's like, it's fine, but I was hoping for something better. And that's how I feel with this one. So it's disappointing to me, the, the Traveler Whiskey, one of the more disappointing releases of, I think this year, I think it's came out this year. So uh, Traveler, you made the list. Moving on to the next one. Number five. This is a bottle from High West Midwinter's Night Dram. Um, and this isn't an indictment of all Midwinter's Night Drams. This is this bottle in particular. I do not like this bottle. This is Act 10 Scene 2. This is terrible. This is one of the worst rye whiskeys I have ever had. It is very bitter. It is unpleasant in every way. I spent $200 on this bottle to get it. And it was the most disappointing thing. I op I saved this for Christmas Day. And I ha luckily, I had brought both of the ones I had at that point or Christmas would have been ruined. But the Act 11 is way better this, than this one. This one, I do not like this at all. Like, I wish I had tried it before I opened it because then I could just trade it for something. But I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, it's here, so I'm gonna keep it as a part of the collection. But this was so disappointing because I had tried Midwinter's Night Dram months before. I had, I had always wanted to try it and I got to finally try it like a month or two before I was able to buy my own. And I was so excited to get it and to like have one for myself. And then this one is just so terrible. It's so bad. It's really, really bad. I always show uh, people who don't like rice mid midwinters because I don't like it and I don't like rye typically and I do like midwinters and I dram. I never give them this one because it's just so, to me, like offensively bad and so disappointing <laughs> when I opened this bottle. I was so upset. This is, you can see how much is missing out of this. I do not like it. Uh, not really at all. So um, that's unfortunate, but hey, it's what it is. Sometimes they're disappointing. Moving on to the next one. Number six is this little bugger right here. The Henry McKenna. Henry McKenna 10-year bottled and bond. This one for, whoa, I guess the cap wasn't even on. The lid wasn't even on. I don't care. I'm never going to go back to this bottle. Uh, this one was one for me that was disappointing because I had heard about this. This was, I heard about this when like Henry McKenna was popping off a few years ago and everyone and their mother was talking about how great Henry McKenna was. And I fell into the hype. I think I spent like $90 on this bottle, which is insane now because it is like literally on every shelf at every liquor store now for like 60 bucks. But it's going to happen. You're going to overpay. And that's part of the reason here for this. I was excited to try it. And then I finally get it home. I get it open and it has this really weird mint taste to it that I don't like. I still, I don't mind it on some whiskeys, but for some reason, it just doesn't work with this one. I, I have heard a rumor that the reason that Henry McKenna single barrel the 10 year single barrel bottled and bond popped off was because when they had entered this into the spirits competition where it like where it blew up from they had like some select single barrels that they knew were really really good that would you know do well in blinds and likely to win the competition so they kind of pushed those to the side and were like here try these not you know i mean that's their thing to do if they want but i feel like that kind of does damage to your brand because people are going to hear how good it is and then take something that is completely at the time overpriced and mediocre and be burned by it i don't think i'll ever buy another one of these i'm sure that there are some variations of these since they are single barrels but i'm good i get it i just uh not a fan of the henry mckenna bottle in the bond tenure i'm sure somebody is it's just not for me but this was one of the most disappointing bourbons i've ever had moving on to the next one number seven comes from one of my favorite if not my favorite distilleries that is jack daniels bold and spicy uh this is one of the traveler exclusive bottles and this is another one for me where i've you can you can barely tell i've even tasted anything out of it. the bottle is open like, like Look at that. You can barely see that I've even gotten anything out of it. Yeah, I, I just, it, it's it's a rye. I was expecting more out of it. I've tried the Sweet Noki. I really liked it. And I was like, okay, cool. Maybe they're doing something cool with the rye. And they didn't. This is not even as good to me as the Jack Daniels bonded rye. So harder to find, more expensive on the secondary if you can find it. Um, and, you know, hard to get because you have to be traveling internationally to even be able to buy a bottle of it. I was hoping for a little bit more. This one's one of those. This falls under like the it's not bad. It's just like, oh, okay, it's a rye whiskey. Well, it's dumb and boring and disappointing. I'm glad I spent extra money on these. Yeah, it's just, it's just okay. But it is disappointing. Moving on to the next one. Number eight. Eight here is this one next one is is booker's apprentice batch um <laughs> yeah i again i do fall into the category where i like this probably more than most people some people said that like it was undrinkable and i don't quite go that far with it but 
it is a far cry from the only other bookers I've ever purchased, which is the Kentucky Tea. That one is amazing. But this bottle is just kind of boring. It is aged for seven years, one month, and two days. It's 125.5 proof, and it's just not that great. I honestly think for $21, the Jim Beam Black Label 7-Year or Gold, whatever it's called now, the 7-Year Age Stated Bottle is far superior to this, and this cost me $125. Bucks. Yeah, I am disappointed in this, and this honestly has kind of made me stay away from bookers a little bit just because they're just so expensive for what I tend to get out of them. Tried a few of the other ones. Like, I tried the um, Springfield Batch at a restaurant. It was fine, but, like, again, it, is it worth the money when I could put that money and get several really good bottles for the same price no not to me so uh bookers apprentice batch in particular you made the list here all right we're finishing strong here with two i don't know which order to go and i think i know what i'm gonna go with we're gonna go with number nine being from buffalo trace the cypb now this bottle is not bad at all I like it, and in fact, I tried it again the other day with a friend of mine. Uh, if you watched the Arizona whiskey video, I did this for him because he had never had it before and I wanted him to try it. It's one of the more rare bottles in my collection. I got this from the ABC Vault. I was so excited because everyone at the time was paying hundreds of dollars for this bottle. Like I saw, so I, I witnessed someone in Georgia pay $999 for Weller CYPB. I watched it happen with my own eyes. This is all day a $40 bottle of bourbon, which is what I got it for. I got it for like 42 bucks through the ABC Vault in Florida. Uh, I get questions about that from time to time. Basically, the ABC Vault is a rewards program that has specialty bourbons once you hit a certain tier that you can purchase randomly. They send you invitations to purchase and you get everything at retail or damn, you know, five, six dollars from retail. So that's how I was able to get my hands on this. And I really like it, I really do, but I just wanted something so much, I wanted so much more from it and I fell into the hype 100% with this one because I was like, oh, it's gonna be amazing. It's perfect bourbon, like, it's the name of it, Crafty Perfect Bourbon. So that's what CIPB stands for. So I totally fell and fed into the hype and this bottle was, like the last time I fell into the hype of something like this because I was like, oh, okay, it's just a good bottle of bourbon. And that's what it is. It's just a good bottle of bourbon, but it, 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 but it just doesn't need to be $999. So ugh, I feel bad for that guy. But, uh, you know, you learn. He probably won't do that again. <laughs> but Weller CYPB, you're a beautiful bottle, but you made the list. And last one here, the most recent disappointing bottle that I've gotten my hands on and a very divisive bottle in 2024, if I can say so myself. That is a Maker's Mark heart release. I am not a fan of this bottle. I don't hate, I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I don't feel like I got robbed or anything like that. I, but it, the bottle is just, it, it's, it's not good. It's not good for, this should not be a $100 bottle. I mean, I know the retail was probably like, was probably like what, 75, 85 bucks, somewhere around there, but it's not even that good. If this was 60, 50, 60 bucks, I'd be like, all right, that makes sense. The nose on this is really nice though. I really like the nose on this quite a bit, but that doesn't save a whiskey for me. So I don't know. This one's the most disappointing and most, uh, most recent for sure. I'm still torn about this one because I was so disappointed because they had, you know, they had rumored they had finished the wood finishing series they were going to move on to something else and we all kind of thought that was at least i thought that was going to be like the seller age and like more age stuff and then they kind of backtracked with this wood finishing series and they ended on such a high note with bep it seems really kind of strange to try to redo that i don't know it was just very disappointing and i really really wanted something more out of it but bep for me still stands on top followed very closely behind fae01 I always get them confused. Maybe it was two. FAEO two. One of the one of them. Whichever one's the sweeter one. Those are the two best the makers mark has done. So that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate it very much. Make sure you leave a like. Comment down below. Let me know what your most disappointing bourbons that you've ever had are. I think this was a pretty comprehensive list. There's probably a few more that I could throw in there, but I think that was probably like the like the highlights for me personally. Also, I'm gonna give away if if you want. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to give away to one person three two-ounce samples of any of the bottles that I showed in this video. I will throw your name into a random name generator a week after this video has been live. Give people some time to watch it. The winner can pick three of the bottles that I put out here to uh, make a little sample pack for you. So make sure you do that. Uh, also, if we hit 2,500 subscribers by the end of this calendar year, 2024, I'm gonna do a three bottle giveaway. So please make sure you subscribe. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. I uh, stole that from Mudahar. I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, cheers.